So this next session is, um, is actually quite relevant because it's basically about uh, from what is the next steps regarding the, the ROS2 support that we have in PX4. So what we are aiming for at this point is to, yes, we have a bridge that works quite well, but maybe we can even improve it even more. So the first thing is to actually understand what did we do until now in the micro TPS bridge then explain to you a little bit of what is micro XRCDDS and micro ROS. I'm not going to extend too much on that because there are parallel sessions even, even for me prosim explaining this. Uh, and then uh, understand why do we need DDS in PX4? So why do we need DDS directly on the firmware side? And uh, how exactly we can do that? And then explain how we can migrate from the current bridge that we have and to uh, this new novel uh, approach using XRCDDS or even micro ROS. So latest in micro uh, micro HPS bridge. So we have already support for ROS2 Foxy, uh, Foxy since some time already. We have already support, we are already supporting uh, time synchronization. So this is important. So you have two POSIX systems. They have two different times. So we have a time on kicks for, we have the time on a companion computer. We want to make sure that whatever data is being exchanged between them, uh, the, they, the time stamps on those messages are actually translated between each other. The other thing is about filter topic filtering. So we want to make sure that whatever participant is publishing data to the to the to the bridge, it, the, it, we need to make sure that he's not actually subscribing to its own data. So this is something that needs to exist. This type of filtering, uh, we already support fast DDS, so it's we can call it fast RTPS 2.0. And the latest things that we had, so we had already a protocol splitter on the client side. So when you talk about protocol splitter, talking about the splitter between the Mavlink protocol and RTPS protocol. And this allows you to uh, someone to have the same, the both, both protocols in the same serial link. And we just added that on, we, we had that on the client side, but we didn't add on that on the companion computer side. So we already created the agent protocol splitter and it allows you to basically uh, exchange uh, data between the companion and computer on the same link using both protocols. So Mavlink and RTPS at the same time. And we also created a, a, a split repo for where the micro RTPS agent is, is being deployed automatically. So it's currently it's standalone uh, application while before it was still, or when you build it, you had to like to go to the build folder of the, the agent and then build it there. Now you can just, go grab it from this repository and it's already synced with upstream master. So a little bit about micro XRC DDS. So this is basically the DDS implementation for resource constrained environments. So it's something that runs on the microcontroller side and it's basically has two, two, two you, you can basically consider two different components similar to the micro RTPS bridge. So you have a client side that runs on the resource constrained environment and you have the agent side which runs on the non resource constrained environment. So basically it's the one that lives in the DDS world. The main, the main, the main um, characteristic here or the main feature is that this is, we're not talking about a bridge, we're talking about a proxy. So the agent side on uh, the agent side, which lives on the DDS domain, serves as a proxy to the client that lives on the resource constrained environment. Some of the features that this uh, the uh, XRCDS include is the time time synchronization already embedded. We have IPv6 uh, support. We have fragmentation support for it, and and also some best effort streams uh, methodologies to actually get the best out of your um, uh, out of the connection between the client and the agent. Uh, about micro ROS, again, I'm not going to explore much uh, much more about this. You can you can check the Prosima talk on this on and in the fewware uh, track. Just going to focus on the uh, ROS middleware interface on both sides of it. So is, if you see a um, layer, if you do a layer comparison, you see that the structure between ROS2 and micro ROS are really similar. There are some differences here. So for example, the supported client libraries, of course, on the ROS2 side, we have more support for other for other languages while on the micro ROS side, since it runs on the, fly, on the, on the microcontroller, we don't have that support, but specifically focus on the middleware where on the ROS2 side, you can have like full implementations of uh, DDS, uh, not only for fast DDS, but our others, of course, but you can see that the agent side lives on the, the agent side lives on the ROS2 side. So the micro XRCDS lives on the ROS2 side and the micro XRCDS client 
lives on the micro raw side, so on the resource constrained part of it. Yeah, this is to highlight that one of the main components of micro raws is the existence of the micro XRCDDS agent and client. So why we don't why do we want to push DDS to the flight controller and in this case to the PX4 side? So again, we had we had already many many too many data exchange between PX4 internals and DDS and ROS, but there there were some things that are still not really convenient, and especially because we didn't have full DDS capability on the flight controller. We just we were just exploring, or we're currently just exploring the RTPS protocol, which is just the wire protocol for the different uh, DDS implementations. And we wanted to bring the full DDS capability to the flight controller. And that's why exploring DDS and micro XRC DDS makes sense at this point. We, we also to highlight that the micro XRC DDS, um, in this case, the current library is dynamic and is static memory free. So it means that instead of just, the, uh, so instead of just like every time you actually um, add a new stream into uh, to to the buffer, and you want to get more data. The only memory footprint is uh, is actually due to the stack growth, nothing else. We also have this um, component of the profile, so this profiles concept, which basically means that you you can add or remove functionality, and you you're just going to change the binary size of the build target that you are actually loading into the the, the microcontroller. We have already uh, out of the box uh, fragmentation uh, and time sync implementations, which of course means you don't need this, the, the custom implementations on your side. Um, and again, we have the possibility of using micro XRC DDS generation tools, simplifying, which basically allows us to simplify the way that we, see, we generate codes for serialization and deserialization. What we just need to do is like we have the IDL files, we load it into the generation code or to the generation tool, and we get the code that we require for uh, publishing and subscribing in both the client and in the agent side of the micro XRCDS bridge. So what we had before, and you might, you might recall this, this, this specific uh, diagram, we had before the client and the agent side for the micro TPS bridge. And now we have the micro XRC DDS client and the micro XRC DDS agent. So the client in the PX4 side and the flight controller side, and also in the agent uh, on, the, on the companion computer side. And there's that one is directly embedded on, in the DDS domain and communicates to the DDS domain using RTPS. RTPS. So we going to call this, or we might call this uh, the micro DDS bridge. So it's not just RTPS at this point is a little bit more than that. We are moving to DDS. And how does how does exactly ROS2 enter in here? So before we had directly connect direct direct connectivity between the micro RTPS agent and ROS2 because as I said we are going to we are using the same uh, type support for the participants on the on the on the micro RTPS side and also on the ROS2 side. But that looked a little bit hacky, so it, don't, it, it wasn't that clean enough. So right now, what we can do is that if we have the client and the agent uh, um, already in the system, what we need, what you can do is that we have a domain uh, for the micro TPS agent. So we have a DDS domain in the micro TPS agent, and we have ROS2 on on the other domain. You can use the Prosima integration services to actually communicate between the different domains. And uh, the cool thing about it is that the integration services allows you to uh, do other things. So we can, if we have the correct system handlers for for the for the integration services, you can actually connect ROS2 with ROS1. You can connect the micro TPS agent with ROS1, which means that you can directly interface the ROS1 nodes that you might have on your system with the PX4 side because you can use the integration services for this. Uh, not only that, but if, if we get us outside of the ROS world, we are talking about, we can, for example, inclu include external middlewares, uh, um, some, some other context brokers like MQTT or even Orion context broker, or even connect this into a TCP, a TCP tunnel. So supporting one, uh, so basically supporting one. Uh, the, and where does micro, micro ROS enter in this? So as I said, the micro ROS is dependent on the middleware of uh, XRC DDS. 
So the main difference here is that, so you still have a client and the agent, but in the client side, you're going to have available the ROS client library. So it means that on the PX4 side, you can actually write uh, uh, code using the ROS2 API, which, which is quite neat if you are actually a ROS developer or ROS2 developer and you want to actually interface with ROS2 nodes on, on, on the companion side, you can basically use exact, exactly the same API on both sides and you will have this sort of interface. The difference is there, okay, and it's in the PX4 side, we'll, we'll use a, a library that is built on top of MicroOS and it's, ad, ad, it's adjusted to the um, uh, resource constrained uh, environments while in the, in the other side, of course, you have the full implementation of ROS2. So how would this uh, migration happen? So on the phase, on phase one, we want to move from the micro TPS bridge to the micro DDS bridge which is basically the same as replacing the micro, uh, the micro RTPS client with a micro XRCDS client and in the agent side, the same thing. Of course, there needs to happen, so there, need to, there needs to happen some code adjustments to actually um, adjust our time synchronization implementation and our field implementation with, uh, with the ones that, uh, that, uh, are, that come with the micro XRCDS implementation. Uh, we want, of course, we want to keep, uh, we, we still want to keep ROS2 integration. So we bring the integration services into the PX4 ROSCOM package. And uh, of course, all of this needs to be tested and needs, needs, we need to provide some documentation and examples to make it work. And the second phase, it, this phase might be optional, but ideally what we want to provide is a way of using micro XRCDDS in one side. And at the other side is if you use some sort of, uh, um, make or some sort of build configuration, you can actually um, um, leverage and and activate the client, the ROS client libraries on the PX4 side. And at the same time, you will be, you'll be using the micro, the micro ROS implementation on the PX4 side. This, this first needs implementation in, in code, but we will start with the STM32F7 um, in, uh, target to, so to bring micro ROS into it. And just to finish up, some references here, the same reference on the PX4 dev guide, so the micro ROS part of it, and then some references to the micro ROS and the micro XRCDS project that are going to be useful even for us that are going to bring this into the source code to actually bring it to the community. And I finish up and thank you very much. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Nuno, that was fantastic. Thanks for uh, putting a picture out there for the community and what's coming next for ROS and PX4. Uh, fortunately, we are uh, almost out of time, so I'm going to ask you just one question, and then uh, sure. we can all go to SwapCard and um, answer the questions live on the platform. Um, the question is, um, how much overhead does the RTPS client adds to PX4? Uh, it's actually quite low. Uh, it, 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 adds, it adds some uh, overhead when you actually increase the stack. So the, uh, if, you, if you add more messages to be publishers or subscribed, you of course increase the the amount of stack that you're actually uh, like consuming, but overall the the application itself doesn't consume that much if if it's running like in idle. Then again, it's it's similar to XRCDDS. The much the me, much messages that you add to the stream, the much more stack you're going to consume. 